This is Adam Paul Seagram for MyDrawingTutorials.com. In the previous lesson, we painted the sky, ocean, and palm tree with the shadow. In this lesson, we're going to be doing the details, finishing and refining. In this lesson, we will be using these colors, the white, the red, the blue, the green, and the yellow. Yeah. We'll be using these brushes, the, both the medium and the smaller fan brush. They're a little expensive, but they're well worth it. There's a lot you can do with them. We're using the Purdy House Painting Finish Wedge Edge Brush. Good for doing lines or large flat areas and other things in between. The Small Detail Sable Brush and the Medium Flat Brush. Uh, when I, in describing this wedge angle brush, it's important that it has a, a flat tip, which is the wedge and the angle is the cut of the brush, which enables you to do all kinds of little tricks. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to refine, the first of all, the background and make it softer uh, with the sky and the ocean and the shadow, and then we'll move on to the palm tree. Okay, so beginning, I wanna go back to my big brush again that I used originally, the sky, and go back into those colors again. Once again, I need more white. Put it right on there, it's dry. Just a little bit of water, not much necessary and a little bit of blue we're back into our color range again and we'll soften this sky down again one more time the sky blue and th we're beginning the part of the painting that is uh, a more of a I don't want to say tedious but uh, the time you can devote your time to to enjoying the process of the quiet painting, you can put on some music you love, or just think about, let your mind drift while the hand moves. And the painting will tell you pretty much what it wants, I find, uh, as you move through it. You kind of develop, I like to develop, and I believe in developing and, and the whole painting at one time, because it's you're telling a story. I don't want to leave out any parts. Yeah, just making the paint the sky softer, softening that, those elements down. There's a little texture in it, but very little. You could make it as pure as you like, as soft as you like, or as striking. This is where your personality comes through. This is where you can experiment and learn what you like and it could come out different every time. I can never predict at this point because I really let the painting and the process tell me what to do. See, the sky is much, sky is much softer now. This might be a good time if you wanted to have finished edges to paint your edges as well. Or not, you might want to frame it, so it doesn't matter. But I like to do that on everything I do. Break that softness into the clouds. Also, take a little bit of the white softened also enhance the clouds a bit just paint into that don't worry about it if you make a mistake you could wipe it off at this point it's all wet and there really are no mistakes they're just experiences and learning we're right in there make it a little shiny I want to make the ocean a little shinier when the clouds are appearing just a hint of that Don't worry, go right across the trunk. We're going to enhance the trunk later. We want continuous lines in the ocean. Basically, they can be broken, however. Okay. Soften it down a little bit. Maybe even put a little streak of white white in there. I'm taking on the tip of the brush. You could do this with a smaller brush. I like using a big one because I know how to make it work in all ways, but you, you will learn for yourself what, what works for you. It's good to have favorite brushes, and you do have to replace them every now and then as they wear out. Okay, and I want to take some of that same white, soften the sand again in the foreground. Leave the, by the ocean, leave it as is. Soften this down. White. Put a white, white. Just a hint. Very, 
very foreground. Okay, so there we've softened up everything, and maybe the surf, but just a drop of water in here. Let's put a little, little action in that surf. I'm using the big brush again. Just a little, some broad strokes. Let them drift in. Like that. The quick strokes are good because the ocean is moving quickly and it indicates movement. So again, this is just, just a feeling. We're going to concentrate on the palm tree. Okay. So there's our background enhanced, maybe a little bit more white, white, just a couple. We'll do that more of that later, perhaps. Okay, a little bit over here. There, soft. Water's soft and reflective, but it does have movement. There we go. Okay, now we'll move on to the palm tree. Okay, well we just finished uh, refining the sky and the ocean. We might add a little detail later, but right now we're going to put our attention on the palm tree and refine that. And this is a process that's very personal, and I think that each one of you will have your own experience with it. This could take, uh, you could do it quickly, or you could take several hours on it. You could spend days or months on it if you like. It's a very um, intimate experience you have with, the, with your work. And so I'm just going to show you what I recommend and we'll begin. But first of all, the shadow of the palm tree. I'm going to use this brush, which I think would be good for softening that. I'm going to go back and uh, create that color again with some yellow and a little bit of green and uh, a little bit of red to go to sh darker quality, shadow, softer. Once again, we've got to use that white. We always have lots of white on board. The white softens things and bleaches them out. There's a soft green, a little red in that. Okay, we're going to make it softer. Not much detail, just smooth it out a bit. And at high, in this kind of full sun, you have a you would have a fairly dark shadow and a fairly short shadow. If it's later or earlier in the day, you'd have a long one. So we're just doing a midday sun. We'll put a little bit of that in the trunk, and soften that down as well. Just use it for softening. You see, the part that's in the sunlight will be more bleached out, more washed out. You won't see as much detail. I'm going to put a little bit of white in there too especially on the outer edge where the sun is hitting it, where the light would be hitting it, and blend it in a little bit too. I think we'll just put some direct white in there. Almost bleach it out, as they do tend to get. Or maybe a hint of yellow. And I'll light it up. I'm gonna add a little of that to the shadow as well. Just soften it again, once again. And wouldn't it, well, I've got the color, I'm in that color. I'm gonna add some into the palm. And again, there's no particular order here. You do what feels right for you. This is your own creative personality. You can do whatever you want to make it exciting or could make it quiet, more white. And I never know how this is going to turn out, so I start playing with it. I kind of let the painting tell me, or how I feel about it. Um, we might have happy mistakes that make, uh, make some nice, makes your painting, gives it personality. See, I'm putting a little white, bits of white in again, a little bit more sunlight here and there dabs using the edge of the brush so I get a finer line okay and I see that I want some of the sunlight here 
as well. And up here. Remember, palm tree is very sketchy because of all the shadows and the way the light hits it. It's always moving. Now I'm going to switch brushes, put this one in the water bucket behind me, swish it out a bit. And I've got a particular brush I want to suggest you try using. It's always fun for leaves. This brush is fantastic. Uh, they're, they're rather, they cost a little bit more, like a fan brush, but you can do some fun things with them. So I'm going to go back into the yellow green again. I'm going to use the edge once again. I think I need a little more color in that. Darker. We want to see it. Red is always good. You'll see red and green in the sh in bright sunlight. If you look into the shadows, you'll find it. I don't know why, but uh, it adds warmth and some depth. I put a little here in the mid range of the trunk also to warm it up. And on the bottom side of the palm leaves. It gives it warmth and depth and it gives it a little more realism. I'm using the edge like a pencil line. Just a little bit here. See, it looks, gives movement to it. I'm just letting it scrap out a bit on the ends. Palm, tree, palm leaves get a little shredded in the wind. They don't have to be exact. The Impressionists taught us this. You see how that little bits gives movement. And once again, I didn't even know how this was going to come out when I started it. I just know that it would sort of tell me and the brush sort of tells me what to do. Get some of that color in there. That indicates I might have a little too much texture there. So I take the rag and pull some of it out. But leave some too. Now I want to put, make some darker, some emphasis on something darker at the bottom. So we're taking green and red. So I get something darker again. Little tap of water in my brush. And let's try that. Could go even darker. darken it even more by adding some deep blue put some red in there it's going to make it a purple almost a purple earthy color almost a black if you put all the colors together you get black you don't even really need to buy black there you see we get some some depth on the bottom here I'm using now the fan part of the brush these are great for palm leaves you see same here, underside. Again, the kind of brush you use can determine the outcome. Put a little darkness here. Just a little bit in the center because it's in the shadow. It wouldn't be out on the end so much. Alrighty, let's see. Now, I want to take the same color and work it back in down in here. I think we need more darkness in the shadow. I can see that now. So I'll add white. Or lighten up this color I've been using <clears throat> with some white. And I think it's time to switch brushes again. So I'll put this back in the water, wash it out. And I want to put some of that darkness into this shadow again. I took it out, but I'm putting it back now because I see that it's a good contrast. You want to work the whole painting at once and let it develop over, all over the whole scape so there's balance. Now, I've done that. 
Again, it's very sketchy. It could be a little bit darker at the base because the trunk is leaning close to the ground. Maybe a little bit of that in there. Okay. And now I want to add a little bit more highlight. I'm going to wash this out again. Use the same, using the same brush. Go back into the light. I'm going to take some light yellow. We can get light yellow green and it got a little dark here so I want to lighten it up put a little white in there too using the edge of the brush I think we're going to use our small brush and lesson two we used this one before and get some of those highlights going a little yellow and a little white Yellow white is good. It's good to add a little pigment sometimes to white. Also true of black. I never use pure black. I always make it slightly off. Put some more of those white highlights in. You can almost let it sit on the canvas and be thick. Remember it's glistening in the sunlight. Little little droplets here and there. That's the shine. You gotta have a balance of water and paint in your brush. You'll have to experiment with that yourself. See, nothing is regular on a palm tree. You night you almost find that in all of all types of trees. There's a balance, but it's not, it's asymmetrical, not symmetrical, mostly. And then you kind of step back, sit back and look, take a look at it. A lot of times it's good to hold your painting up to a mirror because you get twice the depth. It's like stepping way back. You can see more and from a different perspective. And we'll put some of that light highlight on the edge of the sunlit side of the palm trunk. Just little bits here and there. And I think we want to do some in the surf as well. I see there's a little, almost a flaw in the painting here. I'm going to take that out just by dabbing a little paint on it. And I want to get a bigger brush now. Wipe that out. And here's a smaller version of that earlier one. Get it damp and go into the white again. And I want to put some motion in here. Most paintings start with a deeper under base and then come come lighter as, as you paint. And it's true of oil painting in the classics as well. Always start darker and you can add and then light you get more depth that way. And the rags come in handy. Kind of putting some finishing touches on it. And like I said, this process is one you can go over and over. You might say finish it today, you think you're finished, and you look at it tomorrow and you think, I see something I want to add. And I encourage you to do that because it's all about the, your own personal experience and you'll learn that way. And you get to a point where you know you've done enough and it's time to quit. And that's a very fine line. In the beginning I overworked paintings many times and I have to start over. And that's okay too. And down here I want to add a little bit richer blue. A drop of water. Blue, 
make it really blue. There we go. And again, you can use a smaller brush if you're happier with that. Blending that a little bit. Okay. And we're all done. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the experience of painting. For more acrylic painting tutorials, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. You can do so by going to the URL on the screen or click the link in the description. So until next time, happy painting.